Today on the newscast, a major Israeli airstrike against Iranian assets inside Syria and Russia condemns. Get all the breaking details from Jerusalem next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast and welcome to Jerusalem. It's our final day of filming here in the land of Israel after an incredible week of production. Now you saw some of it a few days ago. We posted it here in the newscast. You can see it in our archives, filming in the Galilee, filming right here in Jerusalem and beyond. And a quick programming note, folks, tomorrow, Tuesday, February 21st, we will have our exclusive interview with Amir Sarfati of Behold Israel right here on the channel. You won't want to miss that. We filmed it on the shores of the Sea of Galilee and Amir breaks down all the latest news and breaking events here in Israel and the Middle East from a prophetic perspective and most importantly how it affects you no matter where you live. So be sure to tune in here on the newscast tomorrow, February 21st. And if you missed any of our newscasts from right here in Israel, again, just check them out here on the channel in our archives on the homepage under newscasts. And while you are there, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new update is posted. Okay, let's get into it. We've got some more details on that Israeli airstrike Saturday night in Syria. Now, folks, you may have heard some about this as of now, now that we're coming to you on Monday. But here's a quick update. Here is what we know. Number one, the big news, Russia condemns Israel over this airstrike. More on that in a minute. But first, let's set the backdrop a little bit. Late Saturday night, airstrikes were conducted in a neighborhood just outside of the Syrian capital of Damascus. It is called Kafar Susa. Now, according to Middle East media sources, a, an Iranian school, uh, probably not the kind of school where it's reading, writing, and arithmetic, needless to say, but a so-called Iranian school just outside the Syrian capital of Damascus was struck and reportedly there may have been some Iranian militia officials inside that school. They may have been the targets. We're waiting for more details to emerge. What we do know is at least five people were reportedly killed. And again, this was a residential neighborhood. Five people were reportedly killed, some 15 reportedly injured, yet the casualties were not caused by the Israeli strikes. And by the way, Israel has not claimed responsibility. That is the MO of the Israel Defense Forces when things like this happen. Nevertheless, the deaths were reportedly caused by Syrian anti-aircraft fire, I guess an errant missile, as Syria was responding to the Israeli airstrikes. Now, Iran isn't saying anything. We're not sure who exactly was hit which officials were hit. Was there a high-ranking official there that Israel really wanted to target? We don't know yet. What we do know undoubtedly it is that this strike did indeed happen late Saturday night. And of course, folks, as you know from watching the newscast on a regular basis, Israel has carried out hundreds of such strikes over the past decade targeting Iranian and Hezbollah assets in Syria at Israel's doorstep. Why is Israel doing this? Real simple, two reasons. Number one, they're trying to push back Iran's advances towards the Israel-Syria border. Iran's goal in Syria is to form a permanent forward base from which they can attack Israel. And number two, the precision guided missile threat, PGM for short. Iran is hell-bent on shipping those advanced PGM parts through Syria into the hands of Hezbollah in southern Lebanon to then be used against the Jewish state. That is an absolute red line for Israel. Those precision guided missiles do exactly what their name says. They're designed to hit the targets with greater accuracy and greater precision. Again, that is a non-starter for Israel. So that is why you've seen Israel consistently strike Iran inside Syria. Again, no Iranian response yet to the strikes over this weekend, but the Israeli strikes also come on the heels of an Iranian strike against an Israeli-owned cargo ship last week. Now, an Israeli businessman named Eyal Ofer owns this ship that was struck in the Persian Gulf last Friday 
by Iranian suicide drones. Now, thankfully, no one was hurt or injured. There was some damage to the ship, but it's pretty clear that Iran, not an Iranian proxy, Iran itself, the Iranian regime, was behind this drone strike against Israeli-owned shipping. And this fits with the tit for tat for sea that's really been going on now for at least two years, folks. We've reported about this on the newscast on a frequent basis. Iran targeting Israeli-owned shipping, Israel targeting Iranian assets at sea as well. So by air, by sea, by land, the shadow war between Israel and Iran and Iran's proxies continues to come more and more out of the shadows. And that's only going to increase, folks, and perhaps in a major way. We've got reports today that Iran is now enriching uranium to an 84% purity level. You might say, what does that even mean? Not to get too in the weeds with all the science of it. Just know that if you reach the point where you are enriching uranium and you need enriched uranium to build nuclear weapons, if you get to the point where you are enriching uranium to a 90% level, you then have the capability to build a nuclear bomb. Iran reportedly is now at 84% just 6% away from what they need to have the bomb. So this is sending some shock waves throughout the region, needless to say. And the interesting thing about this, it's the UN saying this. The UN, which has not exactly been tough on Iran's nuclear program. Another thing to keep in mind, as Iran continues to see itself as a drone superpower here in the region, I mentioned the attack against Israeli shipping recently, Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant said last Friday that Iran is now looking to export that drone technology throughout the region. Now we know that Iran has supplied Russia with at least 2,000 of these suicide attack drones to be used in Ukraine. Now Iran wants to export them to other countries. I'm thinking Belarus, Venezuela, North Korea, Iran's allies, other rogue regimes in the world. So. Iran, again, certainly sees itself as a drone superpower, folks. They are rolling these off the assembly lines inside Iran. And at times, Israel has even reportedly targeted some of those Iranian drone factories. Hey, but the plot thickens there. Speaking of which, I mentioned that Russian condemnation. This fits with a pattern that we've covered pretty extensively here in the newscast over the past few months. The more that Israel strikes in Syria, the more that you are seeing heated responses from the Russian foreign ministry. Now, the strike over this weekend, Russia called a, quote, flagrant violation of international law. Folks, that's pretty rich coming from Russia, considering what it's doing in Ukraine right now. But needless to say, these are the kinds of statements coming out of the Russian foreign ministry towards Israel. You can expect that to intensify, number one. And number two, is this really any surprise? Look, folks. At the end of the day, Vladimir Putin, the Russian regime, are aligned shoulder to shoulder with Israel's greatest enemies. Whether it's the Assad regime in Syria, Hezbollah, the Iranian regime, of course, look, that relationship between Russia and Iran is growing across all areas, in particular the military sphere. Russia has also hosted Hamas delegations in Moscow. These are entities that are devoted to the destruction of the state of Israel. And yet, these are Vladimir Putin's close allies and friends. So it should really come as no surprise that Russian hostility, Russian regime hostility against Israel will increase, especially when Israel is going toe to toe with the likes of the Assad regime and Iran. And oh, by the way, many times right under the noses of Russia in Syria. Remember, there are thousands of Russian troops in Syria right now. The prophetic chess pieces are moving on the board day by day here in the land, here in the region. Again, a reminder, tomorrow my interview with Amir Sarfati, we will dig deep into, an, it's an extended interview, we'll dig deep into all of these subjects. It's a great interview. Check Amir out, by the way, at Behold Israel, his YouTube channel as well. It's going to be good. That is tomorrow, Tuesday, February 21st. Until then, from the land of Israel, from the one and only ancient and ancestral capital of Israel, God's city, Jerusalem. Thanks for joining us. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.
Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.